Welcome to For Formula One Sake, the F1 podcast that will be back before you know it. I can't remember what this was a reference to. I don't remember what it means either. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Who are you? It? Oh, it's a Carlos Sainz thing. Oh. He's only gone for one race. Do you remember Ollie Behrman? We don't. Who? Welcome to For Formula One Sake, the podcast that... Wait, no, I'm going to do my thing. What are you? What is it you're doing? Stop. Red flag, red flag, red flag. <laughs> <laughs> so you say that. That's my bit. Red flag, red flag, red flag. <laughs> Theatre is hard. <laughs> it was a joke about Alonso. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake. Finally sponsoring the underside of the Mercedes paid off. Got our money's worth for that, haven't we? That was £25 well spent. <laughs> That's about how much they've spent on the floor as well, I think. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake. It would be a shame if I left all this super glue in your brakes. That's never been said before. Actually, I said it when I typed it this afternoon. <laughs> Do you type out loud? Do you speak whenever you type? Yeah. Dear sir or madam... Yeah, I, I always pretend I'm in a 1960s play. <laughs> Welcome to For Formula One's Sake. You won't believe what Alonso did. We will. I did. I do. Yeah. He did. Surprised he hasn't done it more often. He does. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the F1 podcast that still has an appendix. That's why we're shit at driving. Hang on, who's got an appendix here? Actually, I don't. Mine you, was taken out years ago. I have as well. You have, Ollie. I got one. Thanks. Thanks for putting your oh, hand up on audio. And podcast. yet, when we went karting, I was the fastest. So, coincidence? Yes. 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 Yeah, yes. Definitely. Welcome to For Formula One's Sake, the podcast F1 deserves. I'm Ollie Peer, and after what may or may not have been appendicitis, I'm back behind the mic to prove my worth, even though I've already been sacked. What? Wait, hang oh, on. Sorry, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it later. Uh, tonight, from our fetid little holes on the internet, we'll be smashing back the coffee and cursing the international time difference as we relive the Australian Grand Prix. We'll jump to conclusions, ask whether this is the end for Red Bull, wonder how long this Ferrari dominance will continue, and also wonder what Daniel Ricciardo might do next. That's all to come. Joining me is a man who has too many things to talk about. It's Phil Tromans. Most weeks on this podcast, I live such a boring life that I'm struggling when we write the script to find something to fill this <laughs> slot. But this week... I went to uh, Woburn Safari Park. Uh, thank you very much, eBay, for inviting me, which is very nice of them. eBay took um, you... What? Hang on. Hang on a minute. Yeah, they were bidding for my affection. And they won. And Did they buy it now? So was this a ju- <laughs> was this a journalistish thing? It was a journalist thing. Yeah, they they it's eBay parts and accessories. You can buy parts for your car on eBay, and they wanted to check my car to see if it would pass its MOT. Spoiler: Yes, it will. Not that one. The other one. Yeah, the BMW. The, the one, you the one we, the- Yeah, the BMW one. <laughs> They they gave me a car to drive around in. They gave me a Ford Ranger, like a big pickup truck to drive around in with my wife and child. Yeah. And a monkey jumped on it and it was good. Why yeah. why the Safari Park? Yeah. I don't get it. Well it's because You're talking about it. And MOTs. now I know I can yeah. get car parts it's, from me. It's worked. You can. There we you go. You can. Oh well I'm... And a lot of people don't like doing it, but you can. You can also um, buy monkeys. <laughs> you can buy them on the dark web. You can. <laughs> if a monkey steals your wiper, buy another monkey. He'll steal a wiper for you. Bring it to you eBay. Um, and I went to Italy to drive a new Jeep. What? What? I told you, it's been non-stop action. Yeah, that does sound non-stop. Yeah. Uh, beside him is a man who has an upset tummy wummy. It's Terry Saunders. So look, I've been a bit tired today because I had a busy weekend and I was working yesterday. And today I just felt very tired, very grumpy. And I went to the local supermarket, Arrive, and I was buying some healthy food. But then I bought some sweets and they're the equivalent of i guess percy pigs in the uk nice. yeah which i don't know what they'd be called it's Seb- Seb- sebastian schweins <laughs> and- <laughs> <laughs> they probably would be called that and they have made me so farty and so bloated oh, that no. I- they've made you a father they've made <laughs> a vata <Vata>. yeah vata <laughs> my nevata so and i i i've I feel like a child who's just had too many sweets and now has an upset tummy Oh, yeah. That's the trouble. If you eat quite well normally, mm. when you then don't, it messes you up. The secret is to eat badly all the time. I used to. And didn't you feel much better? I don't remember. I was always drunk. <laughs> um, so, yes. I felt <laughs> fantastic. Yes. <laughs> And what about Ollie. you, Ollie? What have you Ollie, been up you, to? You, you were off. You were uh, you were our car last night. Yeah, week. yeah. In a in a brilliant bit of casting. Uh, yeah, I was ill. I didn't have appendicitis, but I um I was ill, taking lots of antibiotics, which I'm back on again because I'm still ill. Um, but I did I did sort the garage out on um uh, over the weekend, which I was quite excited about, and I found um found a box of old photos. Oh yeah, like 
and I was one of the kids at school that used to like take pictures. I, was there, do you have a kid like that at your school? Was that just weird? <laughs> But anyway, no, I've got loads of them as well. Yeah, it turns out it's quite a nice thing to do because I just saw all these old pictures of my mates and I was like, oh, that's fun. So I was just messaging them on WhatsApp saying, look, this was you when you were 12. That's that's something you won't be, that the kids kids today won't understand because it's just a good that everyone takes yeah. hundreds of pictures a day. Yeah. Well, that's also, you won't, you won't find a box of pictures in a shed when ki- kids these days are no. older because... Because I do that, you know. Sometimes if you're at like a market and you find like all these old photos, mm. and you think, "Oh, I buy some of those. Maybe I'll make a documentary." Never do. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and I was the thinking, thing about, my mind jumps to. <laughs> and I was thinking, what's going to happen in forty years? Are people going to be going around markets and they'll be like, "Yeah, I just found someone's old iCloud account. Oh, should you have a look?" <laughs> well, it might be like an old SD card or something with someone's photos on. Yeah. Trouble is now, like every, every picture that everybody takes on their phone is like fifty megapixels. You're going to go back like twenty five years time. And all the pictures are still going to look great. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to have that aesthetic of like faded, faded times, faded memories, faded photos. It's all going to be crystal Just put a filter on it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Let's get our journalistic hat on and have a look at what's been going on in the news since the last race in Saudi Arabia. Let's have a shambles update. The Christian Horner inappropriate saga rumbles disappointingly on with the news that his accuser has appealed the decision to clear him with Red Bull and has also taken her grievance to the FIA. So that's all going to rumble on for a while. However, the accusation against FIA boss Mohammed Ben Salayam that he interfered with some key decision making at the end of last year's Saudi GP, plus some other nonsense about the Vegas GP, has been dismissed by the FIA, you know, the organisation that he's in charge of. And Speaking of MBS, criminal charges have been filed against him in France by Susie Wolfe, head of the F1 Academy, following the FIA probe against her and her husband Toto last year. Who needs racing, eh? I mean, for our purposes, not really. We could have a series of dull races. We'll still have a ton of stuff to talk about. I'm all in favour of this. If anything, the problem is the race. this race has been a bit too good. We haven't got time to talk about all the <laughs> we shit got that's going We haven't got time to talk about the uh, Australian Grand Prix. That's fine by me. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? FIA saying the FIA didn't do it. The Red Bull going, it's fine. And the woman going, no, I don't think yeah, it yeah. is fine. Red, uh, Red then, Bull said, uh, no, the head of Red Bull didn't do anything. And then the FIA said, no, the head of FIA didn't do anything. Uh, and now Susie Wolf. I, I, the trouble is, I think, I think you've pissed off the wrong woman. I think Susie Wolf. Me? Gonna start. <laughs> yes. No, I, no, 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 no. I, I, pissed I pissed off Claire Williams. I didn't piss. I pissed off... <laughs> Jenny Gower and Claire Williams. I did not piss off Susie, Susie Wolf. Wolf speaks fluent German, and you've been in German for years now, and it's not fluent yet. So she's very angry with you. I'm not married to an Austrian, and I live in Berlin, where everyone speaks fucking English. Well, sounds a bit. Brave. Test me. Give me a test in German. Go on. Um, okay. What is 976 multiplied by 497 in German? Uh, ich habe Feel kein uh, <laughs> Antwort. Right. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> you fail. You don't get your residency permit or whatever. I've already got my residency permit. That's why I'm here. <laughs> oh, right. I thought you were just an illegal over there. <laughs> I think Susie Wolf is going to bring this whole house of cards down. What? My I residency? Be, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's just going to be a side quest while she takes out the FIA. Yeah. Fucking and hell. Red Bull. She's going to destroy Red Bull Racing. She's going to destroy the FIA. I always like Susie Wolf. She's going to be like Bodicea mm. or Boudica. Which is it? I don't know. I don't know. It's Bodicea. That's way out of my realms of knowledge. In German, it's Boudicca. <laughs> is, she, is she quite big in Germany, is she? How tall are women what, in Susie Germany? Wolf. <laughs> well, or, or Bodicea. Hello to all our foreign listeners who have no idea who Bodicea is, but anyway. I haven't got a clue who Bodicea is. Neither do I. Something about Coventry. She was a lady. No, that's Lady Godiva. Lady Godiva. <laughs> yeah, that's Lady Madonna. <laughs> Anyway, I think Christian Horner's going to have to ride a horse naked through the streets of Milton Keynes by the time this is all over. No one wants to no, see No, wait, that. it's not against Christian Horner, it's MBS. Well, him, I don't know. Well, I think Susie Wolf's going to ride naked through Milton Keynes. <laughs> it just, it's just all an, another, another step in this increasing thing of lack of transparency and apparently lots of wrongdoing that, let's be honest, has probably been going on for ages. It's just we don't normally hear about it. But the world's changing and now we hear about this kind of stuff and people don't just let it go. They don't just go, oh, boys will be boys. But it's to be now expected, it's just like, isn't no, it? They're going to fuck you up. Isn't it like, um, I mean, the, the, you know, all big you know, major sporting institutions and organisations have their 
You know, they have their types well, of people like this they at the do, top. But a lot, I, I think for F1, even by sporting standard, is quite non-transparent. Well, I think the problem here, or not the problem, the thing here is F1 used to be run by Bernie Eccleston, who basically ran it in the most opaque way possible, which is just kind of going, yeah, come to my office, I'll sort you out. Yeah, 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 don't worry about yeah. it, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, it was never I'll sort seen it. Again. I'll sort it out, yeah, don't worry about it. Oh, yeah, do you want some money? I'll Bernie? Some money. Bernie? I'll Bernie? <laughs> I'll need some money. Comes He's with a couple room. of catches. You're going to have to crash at Singapore. Woo. And, all this stuff. <laughs> and then it got bought by Liberty, a big American company, and all the rest of it. And all the fall right. It's like they, they lifted the rock, and all of the insects just went. <laughs> 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 and like the few insects that are left, they're just kind of going, What do you mean I can't fuck an employee? And- <laughs> I seduced her. What do you mean I can't? I'm the head of the FIA. What's the point of being head of the FIA if I don't get to choose who wins? <laughs> very valid point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought th- maybe we've been too harsh on them all. I mean, and, and the MBS thing is the best because th- th- yeah, th- that thing about Susie Wolf was so libelous and shitty, and just I mean, legally a terrible thing to say, but also just like child. Child playground levels are shitty. Oh, yeah, about that. Oh, God. Oh, it's like carry on filming here. Oh, yeah, she's a woman. Oh. It was quite amusing. Did you hear what uh, Lewis Hamilton said about Mohammed bin Sulaim? Um, when oh. he was asked whether, whether, whether MBS still had his confidence. Yes, yeah, so didn't he say, he's never had my confidence? <laughs> <laughs> he did. Which is great because no- normally Lewis Hamilton is sort of. He's quite diplomatic. Like he, he's he's got quite a knack of getting his message across, whatever it might be, but at the same time being quite diplomatic about it. But this time, there was absolutely no diplomacy at all. He might have just well, he might as well just have said, "Nah, he's a dick." Well, he's the head of F one now, isn't he? He's going to Ferrari. Lewis Hamilton going to Ferrari. He's untouchable. He can say what he likes now. He pretty, he has got that kind of power, hasn't he? Yeah. All men are equal, but some are more equal than others. McLaren, a fine British institution, albeit one started by a New Zealander, and now fully owned by the Kingdom of Bahrain after the country's sovereign wealth fund snapped up full ownership of McLaren shares. The wealth fund, Mum Talakat, has had a stake in the McLaren Group since 2007 when it bought 30% from Ron Dennis and Monsor OG. Uh, Bahrain currently sits at 137th place in the Cato Institute's Human Freedom Index, just below the Democratic Republic of Congo. But on the plus side, that's two places higher than it was in 2021. Suck it, Tajikistan! Yeah, that's what they'll be saying at Woking this week. (laughs) (sighs) I don't know how I feel about this. What you have about a glorious British New Zealand uh, institution being uh, now completely uh, uh, foreign-owned again? I mean, we're used to that. We've had Land Rover and the Post Office and Richard Madeley, all been owned by foreign investors in recent years. Richard Madeley's owned by North Korea, isn't he now? (laughs) I I know. I believe he's owned by the Kellogg's company. (laughs) And... (laughs) Which in turn is owned by North Korea. But, yes. um, and, you know, the Williams team was first funded by lots of Saudi oil. So, you know, it's not as if this is... Funded, yes. Owned, no. Yeah, but but what, you know, what did they have on Frankie? You know, they they owned it. Well, we'll get, we'll get to Williams and the, what, what they did with the funding later. Because <laughs> whatever they were funded by the Saudis, it wasn't enough, clearly. True. But... Um, I do feel a bit odd about. I just, I just feel odd about countries owning. Why is it? All right, I'm, I don't want to get all Farage here. Why right? do we need oh, countries? We go. Here we go. I don't want to get all Farage, but you know, Britain, you uh, we don't own the railways anymore. We don't own our electricity stations. We don't own. We don't own fuck all. Right, all this kind of stuff, which they'll they'll say, even though it's a very socialist thing to want to own your own railway. But don't worry about that. But then it does feel weird that the Formula One team is owned by a country. But that's, I think Britain. that's my concern. It's less the fact that it's foreign owned. I don't really. I mean, lots of t- you know, uh, Williams is American owned and blah blah blah. It's the fact that it's owned by the government of another country. Also, a government of a country that you know, as we've said, you know, it's it's not it's, it's not it's, you know. It's not, I mean, not know, great for human rights. The UK rights, is, is it? not exactly a bastion of human rights these days, but it's considerably higher up the rankings than it is uh, than 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 Bahrain is. Yeah. But there's if a I lot of that. I mean, sport washing generally, that's the kind of the, that's yes. the phrase, isn't it? I mean, this happens with, with football in the World Cup and, you know, ploughing enough and money. It's happening with golf as yeah. well, you know. Boxing, cycling. When people have it's like, yeah, OK, so you kill a few people and, you know, you, you treat gays badly. But, you know, you do yeah, put on a good event. So people. At least we're not Saudi. Yeah. <laughs> 
But yeah. Lando Norris is so cheeky yeah. as he represents the human rights abusing Bahrain government with his cheeky little. <laughs> look at the orange car! Face. Look at the orange oh, car! He's got a supermodel girlfriend who doesn't mind, you know, the fact their house is literally built on the blood of Bahrainis. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> oh. You know, we'll probably talk later about Valtteri Bottas and his latest TV. Oh, do you think it. we're going to start? Do you think we're going to start seeing? Um, like adverts from the McLaren drivers is like, hi, I'm Lando Norris, and whenever I'm in Bahrain, I like to oppress my enemies or something like that. Yeah. I think it'd be more like the kind of adverts for Dubai where it'll just be like, look how rich we all are, and then pan across to just this empty desert because there's no one there because nobody... Well, nobody's been there since about 2014 when I left. That's that was going the cool set the trend. I did. Yeah. Tell us how wrong we are. You can do via social media. We're at For F1 Sake on Twitter slash X, Instagram, and on Facebook. And we're on TikTok too. And just 19 years after it started, we're on YouTube. Come and watch us. Comment on our videos. And like and subscribe so we can be influencers. Or you can email us, wrong at ff1s.com. Alternatively, if you think we're right, then why not buy us a beer at the Whinging Moustache? The Windy Moustache is a community hub, a youth centre for elderly, disenfranchised F1 fans. A social club where pints are still only £1.20, but we only sell Boddingtons and Caffreys, and we were thrown out of camera for interfering. If you've ever looked at the right-wing fascists on the internet and thought, at least they don't seem lonely, then the Winging Moustache is the place for you. Terry will threaten to bar you, but never will. I'll sing Fleetwood Mac. Phil will tell you about obscure 90s drivers. And producer Matt drunkenly shouts at anyone who will listen about all the better podcasts he's produced. Produced. But mostly, it's an Apple subscription where you get ad free versions of this podcast. To join us at the Whinging Mustache, head to Apple Podcasts and hit the subscribe button. And there's a free seven day trial right now. Or, if you want to just say thanks for making sense of F1 for another year, you can donate a one off pint or three to us at ff1s.com forward slash pint pint pint. Teams, there are some, but they're in an unusual order this week. Weird. Let's go see. Ferrari. We thought what? the day <laughs> we thought the day would never come. What? Ferrari conspicuously failed to Ferrari things up. Carlos Sainz proved that his appendix was only holding him back and Charles Leclerc wasn't far behind as Ferrari pulled off their first one two since twenty twenty two, which actually seems quite recent. All thoughts of Ollie Behrman are now banished, and we've got to wonder if Ferrari are actually ditching the right driver. Mm. There's been a lot of talk about ditching uh, Carlos Sainz and was that a mistake? But they couldn't ditch Leclerc because he has a big contract. And also Carlos Sainz, no one seems to like him very much. So I think they've done the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the trouble is that, I mean, first of all, pay attention, Danny Ricardo. When your position is threatened, this is how you respond. By driving really well, repeatedly. Um, I think if you look back at recent years oh. and are honest with yourself... Can you really say that Carlos Sainz is better than Charles Leclerc? I don't think you can. No. I think that, you know, they have chosen the right thing. And if you're given the opportunity to have Carlos Sainz, who is a perfectly decent driver and has won a few races, or a seven asterisk world, time, uh, world champion, seven time world champion, who will bring all the experience in the world and has been, you know, has won world champions at two other teams and can tell you how they do it, um, it's a no brainer. So, you know, I feel sad for him. But. He's absolutely smashed it. Fair play to the lad. I, I, and especially mu- because he was being cut open not two weeks ago. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it was keyhole surgery, isn't it? Barely, well, I, uh, but it, it, do you think there's some kind of... like them? Well, I think there is some kind of like sporting psychology behind this. Like the fact that he is under threat you know like he's gonna he's, he he's needs, fighting for his life exactly he needs, and and it's the boot up the ass that he just he needed and ollie bearman performing when uh when when the time called for it put put the pressure on him again and so you know it, this is this yeah. is just surely a that, natural reaction he smashed it in um he smashed it in bahrain as well he did really well there we need to put more pressure on the drivers we need to the, the risks need right. to be higher but also, let's not forget about the pressure that's going on with Charlie Clerk right now. Because imagine, you're Charlie Clerk, right? Mm. You have you think you got the better of Carlos Sainz over the last few years. Carlos has kind of, I think it's fair to say before the end of last year, he's kind of fallen into line behind Charlie. You know, he's happy he's, with he's his a number two, yeah. He's happy being number two. You wouldn't say it, but I think deep down he's happy. And now, suddenly, Lewis Hamilton is going to Ferrari. 
Sainz doesn't have to worry about that, whereas Charles Leclerc must be fucking bricking himself. <laughs> Can you imagine knowing that next year you've got Lewis Hamilton in the next car and you're going to be fucking shown up? <laughs> well, I think, I think Charlie Clark will be quietly confident, but I think even he will have to admit to himself that he does need to slightly up his consistency because that's what's been letting him down. He's very nope, quick he is... and he's mostly good, but he does need to just iron a few things out. Mm. Nope, he is shitting himself right there. He cannot sleep at night. He's there dreaming his fucking appendix would go so we can have a night <laughs> off of worrying about Lewis Hamilton going, oh, oh, is this the car you drive? Oh, why don't you drive it faster like me? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and everyone's going to be like, Charlie Clerk's going to become like a pub quiz question of like, what do these three people have in common? Um, Jensen Button, Nico Rosberg, and Charlie Clerk. Oh, they were all teammates to Lewis Hamilton. Oh, wow, Lewis they're, Hamilton. They're all world teammates. champions? And they're all, no, 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 because he won't. <laughs> no, oh no, what if he is? Oh my God. Maybe no. he'll win one and retire. I think, I think no, that's I th the, Well, no, I think he's a better driver than both of those comparisons, so. No, the pressure is on. But he could go into a Ricardo-style spiral. Ooh, I love I love a Ricardo style spiral. <laughs> T-shirt, good. Oh yeah, write, write that down. Straw spiral, write Ricardo on it. Put an arrow going down. Sell it. Done. Done. Bosh. I'm Horner. Um, but the uh, no, I just I think that and Signs is free, isn't he? He's free, he doesn't care anymore. Like he's got he's got he's, nothing to worry about. Yeah, he's riding off into the sunset. Follow the light. <laughs> don't no, don't do that. And um, no, you know, I, I don't. It's, it's like he's hit rock bottom, and yeah. the only place to go is up. The I mean, only way bottom. is he's currently up. one of the best. He, yes, Baby. it's like Yaz always said. <laughs> Yaz, the great Yaz Marina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. But, where are they with the F one gig? Yeah, but and now it, the, the weirdest thing is happening is that Christian Horner was asked about Carlos, or he was asked about a different driver for next year, and he was kind of implying that Carlos Sainz could be welcome back into the I, Red Bull fold, which I is... I think they should. I, I wrote a uh, an opinion piece for a noted international outlet, not today, saying this very thing. What was the noted international In outlet? Yeah, what uh, was it? Carthrottle.com. Oh, okay. No, it's pretty, pretty, po not, pretty not popular. The, yeah, not the it's got more YouTube thing. subscribers than we have. No, I'm not um, I'm laughing. I was, I was, I'm, I was pretty, laughing. Yeah, I, I, I think that is absolutely what they would do. I don't see. I, I look at the other people that they're talking about to replace Perez, and we'll get onto Perez in a minute. Um, and I'm thinking, I think science would be better than all of them. But to be honest, right now, if you were Toto Wolf, science is a fairly appealing driver. If you're Christian Horner, science is a fairly appealing driver. If you're whoever's in charge of Audi, science is a fairly appealing driver. Yeah. I think he's doing all right. I, th I think he is going to be all right. And if he carries this on, then he is going to be quite hot property to the point where I think he will be able to, to a certain extent, choose where he wants to go. And speaking of Mercedes, if 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 you were offered a Mercedes driver right now, you'd sort yeah. of go, ah, no, you're all right, thanks. But like, if, you know, it I looks like the Max Verstappen rumours have died down a bit, but if, asked, but you know, if someone like Alonso went to Red Bull, for example, you know, Carlos Sainz is a very good option for the Aston Martin as well. You know, there's, this, there's just, he he's could pretty options. much, he, he's going to go somewhere next year. His problem right now is he's got too many options and don't fuck it up. Yeah, if anything, he needs to be a bit shitter so he doesn't yeah. have such a dilemma. Yeah. <laughs> See my career. Be shitter. <laughs> McLaren's run is nearly the best team, but not quite continued in Australia, with home hero Oscar Piastri leading the way until he was told not to. Lando Norris therefore picked up the final podium spot. But should he be run out of Australia and banned from returning? It was a brave decision by the team wall to switch, switch the local hometown boy yeah. out of a podium position in favour of the Belgian. The Belgian? No, no, Norris. He's Belgian. He's half Belgian. Did we know that? Did I know yeah. that? Yeah, his mum's Belgian. Oh. I didn't know that, I but it explains a lot. There, but I might have made that up. He's basically Max Verstappen at this point, who is also Belgian. Oh, I hate them all. Can we, can we just have a little moment here to see, look, Ferrari and McLaren at to the top. It's like the 90s all over again. Exactly. It's, it's all over <laughs> the shop. Oh, the natural order is resumed. Not these fucking pretenders, Red Bull and Mercedes, winning all the races for the last when 20 years. When was the last time it was two Ferraris and a McLaren on the top? Oh, my the top God. I, I wish I knew the answer to that stat, because that would make us like a proper podcast. But I'm going to guess... it was like Raikkonen. It was Alonso, Massa and Raikkonen at the 2009 British Grand Prix. I feel, I feel like you need to be vindicated live. I, mean, I feel like finding I mean, that gonna, out. I'll Google it. Hang on, hang on. Hang Go on. Hang on. See if you can find I the answer. I reckon it was... When's the last all McLaren? When's the last time 
McLaren was on the podium. It was good Actually, to see, though. They, won, they came, what, 1-2 at once, didn't they? Well, yeah. yeah. Max loving this. I don't know what I'm going to, I'm going to Google. We don't we're know. Do, no. <laughs> if you know, if you know the answer to this, then write in. Yeah. Oh, it. yeah. You can, you can oh. write in. I don't no, want to we'll, be We'll read it and go, huh. No, I, I just don't want to be corrected. I want, oh. you know, let's just pretend I was right. That's what normally happens. Yeah, it's like right. the old yeah, days. Like if you want to find it out, cars of Massa, Alonso, and Raikkonen. If you want to find it out, you've got to go to the library and get a book out. That's that's how you find yeah. it. Yeah, fuck, fuck you, millennial. Yeah. <laughs> with your TikTok, <laughs> listening to a podcast with earphones that haven't got cables. Oh, back in my day, we had Murray Walker on Grandstand if we were lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or the old what was the old bloke Raymond, Raymond Baxter, even before Murray. When I was a kid in the 60s. <laughs> oh, when I, when I was a kid, he only had horse racing. <laughs> yeah, I used to dream of going to see Nuvolari drive. <laughs> I, love the, I love your laugh on that. It's like with me and Terry just vacant. No, yeah, I, la- I laugh because I've got, I, I realised I've gone so deep that even you don't guys don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> what <are you> talking about? <laughs> Who the fuck's a Nova Lari? Is that a type of chocolate? He was one of the greatest racing drivers in history, but it was pre... It was oh, sorry, did you, did you mispronounce one. Lewis Hamilton? <laughs> <laughs> Bloody Netflix watchers. Anyway. Anything else to say on McLaren? No, I mean, they're doing quite well, but but they're doing quite well. They seem to have sort of stalled in their massive upsweep of mm. fortune. And they've kind of got... They're, they're, they're not falling, which is great, but I do wonder now if they're going to stay there or if they've got what it takes to... Because Ferrari have seemed to have got past them. I Red love Ferrari still now. at the front, apart from today. Mm. And McLaren are going to sit third. I mean, they're lucky that Mercedes appear to have... Well, we'll get to them in a minute, but... Um, for I the record, worry that they're going to sort of stay hovering there at about third place in the for, teams. For the record, for all the years we've been doing this podcast, and Ferrari have been laughably shit. I finally got around to making a T-shirt saying how shit Ferrari are, and they've got quite good. <laughs> so you're welcome, t-shirt. Marinello. <laughs> I will be available. I, you just put me on a, a very expensive contract, Ferrari, and every day I'll design a T-shirt about how shit you are, and it'll go in a box, <laughs> and you'll keep winning. World champion. And they'll be like, oh, God, our secret is this British guy in Germany. <laughs> and you'll just give a nodding wink and walk off, wh- nodding wink? A nodding wink and walk off into the sunset. <laughs> that much money, I'll nod as long as they like. <laughs> Red Bull. Are the cracks starting to show at Red Bull? After yes. what seems like months of 1970s chauvinism related argy bargy and Milton Keynes and Austria, Red Bull's veneer of invincibility was peeled back. Whoever was responsible for building Max Verstappen's left rear brake is clearly about to get suspended because it got stuck and blew up, leaving Max with only 21 more chances to win this season. Sergio Perez was, of course, there to save Red Bull's fortunes, but unfortunately, he's not very good, so only managed fifth. Mm, this so, was an exciting thing at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Last week, or the last race, we made a joke about Christian Horner so horny that he fucks the car and he can't stop fucking the car. Ha ha ha. And I'm just wondering uh, what sperm does to a break. Mm, those <laughs> sexy, sexy breaks. Well, we saw <laughs> it blows up <laughs> as you're entering the pits. Because you know, in the <laughs> bath where it kind of goes all like, um, you know, gummy what why are we talking <laughs> no. why are we talking about this <laughs> oh come on don't pretend that neither of you've wanked in a bath listen before. i've never wanked in a bath yeah but what? you don't do it do it once well, phil not, and you'll never do it again i've had a bath in 20 years i just never a wank oh i have a bath every day i'm wanking it so <laughs> he never learns his lesson <laughs> i think quite often that's why his brakes don't work i'm just saying i reckon in <laughs> with all that brake fluid it would <laughs> Well, That's not saw. brake fluid, uh, etc. Et uh, I mean, come on, we've been, really, we've been, come on, no, 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 no. I don't care about Formula One. If you, both of you really never wanked in a bath. When did I say I've never wanked in a bath? Oh, you just being coy about it and using no, I just No, I just knew exactly what you were talking about. And I was just thinking, why the fuck are we talking about a gloopy cum in a bath? I don't want to talk, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. There's the thumbnail. Have you, have you never listened to this podcast before? <laughs> I'm pretty sure we've had a T-shirt about that for like two years now. Gloopy bath cum. Gloopy cum in a bath, <laughs> FF1S. There's a T-shirt. <laughs> Write that one down. Shop, shop, shop. <laughs> I wonder who's going to win the next race. Can we get AI to make these T-shirts? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know if there's anybody around you at the, at the F1 who listens to this podcast, just shout, gloopy cum in a bath and see if that <laughs> <laughs> What do you think? Oh, do, 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 do we think? Do we think there was some sabotage? 
with cum or no. whatever else? Well, we've we've been saying since this whole Christian Horner thing started that if anything is going to knacker Red Bull this year, it's going to be the fact that the the uh, the nonsense at the top filters down and the tight ship that there is being run starts to flounder mm. and run aground. And I just wonder, is this the start of it? Is this the start of it? Basic things like making sure the brakes work. You you weren't wondering then. You were hoping. You were like you were Basically, wondering, hoping, were knowing. Hoping. You know, it's all but, academic. But have they said like what was wrong with the brake if it wasn't creepy cum? <laughs> uh, I don't know actually. Which normally the they're quite, yeah. Normally they're quite good at being like, oh, it was this thing, blah blah blah, this happened, blah blah blah. Well, but Verstappen was quite annoyed when he got out of the car, and he seemed. I, I seem to remember him being quoted as saying something was shit, possibly in relation to something that should have been done that wasn't. Well, he was whinging about but, it for a little while, like a lap or so, wasn't he? And then, uh, but when he pulled into the pit, it, it literally exploded. That's uh, I just seem to remember that it just well, yeah, exploded. Yeah, it like, caught the fire and just went bang. It just popped. To be honest, it must be pretty hard to sabotage a Formula One car because, like, all, unless you're Williams, but it's all done by Excel spreads. <laughs> loosen a bolt. Then, yeah, but there's cameras everywhere. You know, there's, oh, you know, yeah. there's footage. That's what I mean. And then everything's. You'd think it'd be quite easy just to go in and you know, get your knob out. <laughs> Bre- okay, so I'm Pop just reading in. this now. Oh, here we go. Brembo has bra- blamed Red Bull for it. He's Brembo. Yeah, Brembo, Brem- the, the manufacturers of the brakes. Oh. Brembo has said, look, we have not tested our brakes on Christian Horner's <laughs> gloopy, blurry cock cum. <laughs> <laughs> just get yeah, to... Brembo have, Brembo have come out and said, it's not us. Although it's more of a Jos Verstappen thing to come on the brakes and blame Horner, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, genius. <clears throat> He could probably do it from a distance as well to evade the cameras. Maybe that wasn't that wasn't a fire in 1994. That was just his <laughs> car in the pit. <laughs> he had a wank in the car and a spark just sat off all the cum. Because <laughs> you know what? I have waked at a bath. I've never tried to set a fire to cum. I don't know if it's flammable or not. Well, well you can still try. You're not we too do, old. Yeah, we, we do, do have a, look a YouTube for a light channel. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to join us on Twitch... <laughs> Some bonus content. Yeah, or join us on yeah, join the whinging moustache, and that's a good idea of the extra content you'll get. Yeah, you but won't get this on any other F one podcast. Not at all. The Actually, no. The checkered flag are doing it. But the whinging moustache is just a link to a video of me <laughs> in the. What you get? <laughs> trying to what light. Trying to light has come. It's just. <laughs> Did I tell you before? Like it's a commentary the... from the 1994 whatever Grand Prix it was. I can't remember. I don't know if I've told this or not before, but when oh, I Christ. was a, when I was kind of you know an up and coming comedian back in the 2000s, oh, so to speak, there was <laughs> they they announced that they were going to really the, the the XXX domain was being made for porn, and so you could buy any website but have .xxx on the end. So I had terrysaunders.co.uk, which I still have, and I was going to buy terrysaunders.xxx, and if you went to it, it would just be a video of me, me naked just <laughs> masturbating. But I'd never tell anyone about it, so the only people to ever find out would be people who'd be like, I wonder if Terry Saunders has got a porn thing. Anyway, it turns out it would cost thousands to get an XXX domain, so I never bothered. No, so, but but, but the video of him masturbating still up there somewhere. You just got to find it. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Saunders dot EU or something. D E now, yeah. yeah something it's cheap. A, it's called an Easter egg for a reason. Just <laughs> <laughs> makes you last longer, Phil. Or a Cadbury's cream egg. <laughs> They're all cream eggs by the time you finish with them, etc. Oh. Um, <laughs> so, Sergio Perez. <laughs> Speaking of wanks in a bath. Hey, hey. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Oh, he's a wank stain, isn't he? He's, he's this... a sock. <laughs> he's an old stiff sock, isn't he? <laughs> Sounds like something British gentlemen would say to each other in the 50s. Ah, oh, come on, you old stiff sock. <laughs> um, chocks away. Anyway, uh, this was... I mean, Perez, in fairness to him, it's got, they've got... Rebel got one to it the first two races of the year. And Perez's main job is to be there to do well when Verstappen can't for whatever reason. Ah, can I just interject there? I don't think that is his main job because it, Verstappen doesn't ever not do well. So his main job is always to finish to be second behind Max Verstappen. And unfortunately, they've never said to him what happens if Max Verstappen doesn't finish a race because it hasn't happened for two years. So he's there in the car going, what do I do? And they go, let's go in the front, go in the front. And he's like, but Max isn't there. How can I be in the front if Max isn't there? And they're like, no, no, Max has gone, you lead. Oh, but what do you mean Max has I don't understand <laughs> If Max is gone, how can I be behind him? None of the words you're saying make any sense. 
I just finished. Fi- well. <laughs> <laughs> I feel comfortable here. I feel safe. <laughs> this is a safe space. There's no pressure. There's no interviews afterwards. I just get to go home. <laughs> See my children and have a lovely time, like a like I was a middle manager in the 1970s working for a processed food factory. That's all I want in life. <laughs> I think you're right. I think we've nailed it. Aston Martin. Fernando Alonso was touted as the messiah for Aston Martin, but it turns out that actually he's a very naughty boy. We're not saying that by breaking a million years early for the corner, he caused George Russell to crash, but the stewards seem to be saying that. And smack Nando with three points on his licence and a time penalty that bumped him back two places. Lance Stroll inherited his sixth place. Typical Lance inherits everything, doesn't he? (laughs) 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 Uh, oh Fernando as Abba famously sang Fernando is faster than you George because you break yeah (laughs) crash in the middle of the track I don't know it's a bit of a I've I've watched the footage back from Russell's car and I can absolutely see why he lost control because Alonso braked very early and as the stewards decided too early and that's not really on you know when you're hammering around at 100 and whatever miles an hour, you have to have some faith that the drivers that you're racing with aren't going to do something stupid. And I would say that crossed the line into being something stupid. And if I'm absolutely honest, I think he's a bit lucky that he didn't have worse thrown at him. I think if he wasn't Fernando Alonso, hmm. it he did might feel, have got I, a race ban. I thought it had race ban written all over it. When you remember that, that crush with Grosjean, however many years ago it was, in Belgium, where accidentally, admittedly, he caused that massive pile up at the start. He got a race ban for the following race. Yeah, and if and you it, can, and and if Alonso, I, I mean, he says it wasn't deliberate. I don't see how you can accidentally break a hundred meters early for a corner. Um, well, was it? Was we, he um, blaming a technical thing, or was he? What was his? He reasoning? was trying to say that he was slowing down early to try and get a better exit out of the corner. Right. And and you know, it, in theory, that is a sound race strategy, but not to that level. Mm. And also, it was on like the penultimate or the last lap, and I was like, "Oh, you didn't realise that George was right behind you." And you know, he's an experienced enough racer to know exactly where Russell is and to know what would happen if he did that. I think he got a bit of red mist and thought, "Oh, I reckon I could get George to have a bit of a moment here and lose some time." He probably didn't intend for him to go spearing off into the wall, but you know, the road to hell is paved with hell. Well, well, bits, bits of bits of George Russell's car, as it turns out. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. And I do feel that this is the sort of thing that probably Alonso does fairly often in much more subtle ways, but hes I just don't think he did it very he's well. A master, he's a master manipulator. And yeah, yeah. This, this wasn't, this wasn't, this was a bit, bit on the nose. Yeah. Yeah. And I think he deserves it. And I think he might deserve a bit more, but he's not going to get it. And also, it was funny because Aston Martin could appeal the decision, and they kind of went, "Nah, you're right." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know what they're going to appeal. It's like, yeah, we disagree, and I presume the stewards just went, "Okay, well." But presumably, presumably, as a team boss, you have to you, know, you have to back your driver, and they kind of went, "Nah, nah, you're fine, mate. Don't worry. You, 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 you get your eighth place. Don't worry about it." Yeah, he's, he's quite lucky. They only lost two places as a result of it, but. Um, <laughs> You know, Stroll was Stroll. Stroll was there doing what Perez should do: just be a bit behind the good driver. And then, when the good driver loses his spot, you're there to get that spot. Bosh. Right. Pay attention, Sergio. <laughs> Mercedes. Mercedes was so full of hope at the start of 2024, but within three races, the wheels have fallen off and everything's tipped over. George Russell was a bit on the nose in his literal portrayal of how things are going at Brackley, but then he's never really struck us as one for subtle references. Probably watches Mrs. Brown's Boys. His favourite book is The Da Vinci Code. That's probably true. Yeah. I mean, I, I bet he loves Mrs. Brown Boys. I, I'm torn by this because obviously I don't like George Russell. And there was a bit where he was screaming for a red flag, and he sounded terrified because he was on a track, on a funny angle, on a live racetrack, and that must be fucking yeah. Scary. And he couldn't at the wrong angle to see even if anything was coming. So yeah, just so like, you just don't know if something's going to come. But also, kind of funny oh. <laughs> <laughs> because he was all right. Because he was all right. Yeah. And because if it, had, if it had been absolutely annihilated by something crashing into him, it wouldn't have been not funny. funny at all, not but. funny at all. No, yeah. no, no. Yeah. But no, funny because the, it was the way that the cut. The car just kind of landed on itself. 
I'd never seen that before. <laughs> it was so funny. It was weird, wasn't I mean. it? It's like it was leaning up against the wall, but that's it was what just I mean, on his own. Funny. Like, the, the only time I think of something similar was, do you remember when, was it when Jensen Button did his comeback race? Oh, and he bashed into Verline at Monaco. Yeah, and he yeah. was like literally on the side of the wheels, but that was still bashed into something and like It was up against the, the wall, side. wasn't it? Yeah. The, by the tunnel. But this one is like the tire came loose and they'd like became because you know when you buy those like die cast like scale models of formula one cars and they have them on a little stand so you can see them at a better angle it's like that it's like got the one wheel behind me yes yeah you got loads the wheel <laughs> became the wheel became like a little stand for the car and <laughs> it's a lovely started, display yeah and he just started shouting red flag red flag and i was like oh i mean I he was shitting himself <laughs> you could hear the I fear mean, in his voice it is a it, <sighs> It was a bit weird that they didn't immediately red flag the race. Yeah, I mean, because there's been a lot of analysis about this, and it turns out the VSC, the virtual safety car, was fine because he didn't get yeah, killed. Yeah, there, there was so nobody right hindsight, behind him. Yeah, so in hindsight, he didn't get killed. Well done. But at the same time, I kind of thought the point of safety was to err on the side of caution. <laughs> I don't know yes. about you. <laughs> I mean, it's literally called a caution. Mm. Yeah, I think... It feels like they went, all right, well, should we flip a coin? <laughs> Shall we? Ju- let's just see if anybody smashes into him. And Someone's and, gone. Uh... It was the last lap as well, you know. You know? Yeah. And so it, it would have just been really easy for them to just call it at that point. Yeah. No, I don't think anybody would have been pissed off if the race ended under a red flag because a car was on its side in the middle, in the middle of the fucking track. track. Yeah, I, I mean, I just fine. Call me an old Just let old them fogey. race. <laughs> call me an old fogey, <laughs> but I think that if someone is literally in peril, maybe... Stop the car. Um, it's called <laughs> racing, Terry. Oh, on the ticket, it says it's dangerous. We, we <laughs> <racing>. <laughs> I see you've been camping for the Silverstone weekend. <laughs> um, the that, the George Russell thing obviously took the headlines, but we shouldn't forget that Lewis Hamilton also didn't finish, and they had a double deal. Oh, there. like he gives a shit. He, he was. I bet he saw Verstappen go and just went, what's the point? <laughs> Do you know what? I I, when I was I watching, rapid- I thought exactly the same. I thought he just sort of saw him go and went, gee, oh, I can't be asked." <laughs> then just made I mean, a complaint about it's probably something. The state that the Mercedes is in this year. He's, or, he, he probably sorry. thought that. I, I think I made a joke on Twitter, like he's probably just gone to study his Italian for next year. Or, what, how about this? Lewis and Max are having an affair... And okay. they worked out the best time for them to get up to some hanky panky is when no one's watching because yeah. they're both out of the race. So they've made a pact that if one of them f- quits a race, retires from a race, the other one retires, then they're around the back of the Williams motorhome. Yeah, in the bath with their jizz. <laughs> <laughs> the ice bath. Does it make yeah. a difference how hot or cold the bath is? Now, I like a hot bath. No, but that sounds like an experiment <laughs> uh, that, we, okay. <laughs> that we should try. I'll go, Terry does a hot bath, I'll do the medium one, (laughs) Phil could do the cold bath, and we compare notes. No, I suppose an ice bath, it would get get quite hard. The The, the sperm, the sperm. Yeah, but the logistics surely would be quite difficult. I I mean, I have done an ice bath once, and I must say, I didn't didn't feel like wanking. I was going to (laughs) say, it wouldn't get me in the mood. Yeah. (laughs) It'd be like, where is it? Lovely romantic bath. (laughs) (laughs) It's gone. But if you build up a resistance, like if you have an ice bath every day... Yeah. Well, if you're Vim Hoff, then maybe it would work. Do you remember but... that ice bucket challenge thing? Let's yeah. just maybe do that. Just pour a bucket of ice on me whilst I'm wanking. <laughs> <laughs> For spider bifida or something. <laughs> I mean, it's probably better than the dog's trust, isn't it? So, yeah. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> And they also rans. Ha. We were all set up to rubbish has this season, but credit where it's due, double points finish. Not too shabby. Credit where it's due, still bored. Bye. Next. Williams. Nothing says your shit like your teammate crashing into a wall and destroying the car, only for the team to then take your car and give it to him because he's less of a liability. Fancy Le Mans, Logan? That's his only chance now. I mean, if if his if his confidence wasn't in the shitter already, <laughs> the fact that you watch your team, he probably watched his teammate go ah and smash and go ha ah, ha, he's binned it, and then they come with the radio going, uh, Logan, can you give your car to Alex, please? <laughs> to to damn Logan Sargent with faint praise. Um, I didn't know about this. I missed this story entirely, and I didn't notice that he wasn't in the race. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not wonder? Why is he not last? What do you... 
just didn't occur to me. I just thought, I just didn't, I forgot he existed. Alpine! <laughs> <laughs> Take a shit car, throw a tear off into the brake duct, see what happens, no points. Bosh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Excellent. RB. Yeah, you're not getting that Red Bull spot, Danny. Uh, what are you finishing 11 places below? You're not that highly rated teammate. Credit where it's due, Sonoda had a pretty good race to get seventh in an RB that was shit a couple of races ago. <laughs> and credit where it's due, Daniel Ricciardo qualified way behind him and still said that was the best he could do. <laughs> you fucking yeah. prick. That's not how you make yourself look I, better. I, I, think he sl- I think he was pinning all his hopes on the fact that there was something wrong with his car. <clears throat> and apparently they've taken the car apart and generally said, nope, it's fine. And he's now yep. coming to the realisation, it's just, fuck, I'm not very good anymore. For whatever reason... <laughs> Even Logan Sargent went, oh, it wouldn't be you. <laughs> yeah, well, I was, call- I was calling Danny Ricciardo uh, Bogan Sargent this weekend. I was quite pleased with that. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Salba. Valtteri Bottas is having no fun at all on the track, but his advert for Uber Car Share is brilliant. Maybe that makes up for his team failing to design a fucking wheel nut properly, let alone the rest of the car. Fuck this. Fuck this fucking advert. That's I a am good advert. St- I don't care how good the advert is. I am so sick of this shit. Everyone on the internet is like, oh, Bertrand Bonner, oh, he's doing an advert. He's got his- I'm sick of his mullet. I'm sick of this kind of cheeky chappy thing he's doing, and he's finishing a race fucking 15th. If he'd retired and was doing this, great. I'm all for it. But there's just something I don't like about being funny and being shit. Oh, God, it's that's not, me. It wasn't his fault. <laughs> <laughs> It, and, and it wasn't his fault. Again, it's the fact that Sauber can't do pit stops because they've designed the fucking wheel nuts badly. So even if they were super fast, which in fairness they're not, they go into the pits and they have to spend a minute there because they can't get the bloody wheels on and off. I mean, that is hilarious. Yes, Objectively, it is. And apparently, apparently the problem is like a fundamental design with the way they've designed their wheel nuts. It's like, how fucking complicated is a wheel nut? Apparently very. Um, and it's, it's so complicated that it's going to take them several races to fix it. Oh, we've Ooh. lost Ollie. Ollie, that looks like you. Ollie, there's Ollie's some been, kind of um, this is, nuclear disaster. This seems like you've been taken over by uh, a terrorist <laughs> organisation. We now control Ollie Peart. <laughs> right, I'm going to just get my camera working. Uh, so now it's time for the stay of F1 with Terry Saunders. So I sort of think I've got Alonso all wrong. Over the years, we've always talked about him being wilier than Roadrunner and using all the tricks in the book. But the one thing I've always misconstrued about Fernando is that I've always thought, deep down, that he's not, you know, dirty. But after this weekend, I think I finally understood it. He's just really good at cheating. (laughs) If you'll allow me a little story from my past... When I worked for the glamorous O'Neill's Irish pub chain in about 1999, I worked out a little trick that if you put an order for food in, then cancel it. The printer in the kitchen prints the original order, but no cancellation. So one day a burger comes down in the little lift, but there was no one to eat it. So I did. Over my time there, I would very occasionally pull this tiny trick, but being careful not to repeat myself too often or with the same other staff working. What I would come to call doing an Alonso. (laughs) Sorry, as I'm writing this, it's just giving me a sense of how ridiculous Alonso's career has been. I worked in that bar in 1999 when I was 19. I'm now 44. That bar job doesn't feel like something I just did. I've lived several lives. I've had several careers, lived in several places, done two F1 podcasts and dyed my hair a lot in that time. I'm just saying that job was a lifetime ago. The Terry I am now is not the Terry I was then. I went into that pub this Christmas. It's no longer an O'Neill's. The place is unrecognisable and does not recognise me. But two years after I had that job, Alonso started his first Formula One race and he's still fucking going. (laughs) Don't worry, this story is going somewhere. After I quit O'Neill's, I found out that months later, other people had learned the same trick and were doing it every day for free food until they got caught and fired. And I fear, after all these years, Alonso is just getting sloppy. He thinks he's better than everyone, but he also thinks he'll never get caught. He's me chowing down on the free burgers, safe in the knowledge that I'm cleverer than all of my colleagues. And well, I was. And I think Alonso (laughs) still is. I don't know if Alonso actually fucked up this weekend or that George Russell over panicked. Think about poor George for a second, full of stress of a career that might never be. All the potential of signing for Mercedes just as they slide into oblivion. Remember when he nearly won his first super sub race for them? That was the pinnacle of his career. Since then, he's just been driving for a big shit team, brackets Mercedes, instead of a little shit team, brackets Williams, whilst his champion teammate is fucking off to Ferrari and one of many successful F1 podcasts is mocking him just because I don't like how he stands against the wall. Anyway, Alonso, (laughs) tip is try to be a bit more subtle when eating those burgers. Thanks, mate. (laughs) 
That's it from us. We'll be back even before there's more racing with another of Phil Troman's race previews and we'll be answering your questions in Listener's Corner. Until then, it's goodbye to Phil Troman's. Goodbye. We haven't had time to talk about the fact that Williams, uh, until this year, has been building their car using Excel to manage it, which is fucking brilliant. Concaccinate uh, A1 plus A2 plus A3, close bracket. <laughs> Actually makes me much more impressed with how close they are to everybody else. <laughs> and to Terry Saunders. We haven't had time to talk about IndyCar and something called the Thermal Club, which I don't understand what happened, but everyone is very angry. <laughs> In the meantime, check out our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash for f one sake, and follow us on Twitter at for f one sake. Oh, and check out our YouTube channel where you can Ooh. see as well as hear us. If you're watching on YouTube already, here's something just for you. Hello. Oh, God. Was, well, was, you know, whatever. However, you want oh, to watch or bloopy. listen. <laughs> 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 However you want to watch or listen, just type in for F1's sake or something and see what comes up. Uh, Terry, where can people buy merch? FF1S.com forward slash shop, shop, shop. The last shop has several O's. <laughs> Thanks for listening. I've been Ollie Pierre. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.